My so-called life is sponsored by... How's it going? I'm Godless Sewing and this is the Godless Sewing Channel. So today, I'm going to be talking about how I brought my grasshopper sewing machine back to life. I said I wasn't going to do it, but I couldn't just let it sit there on the shelf. Also, I made a hippie poncho and I'm adding on to my grandma core vest. Plus... I'm on the search for a new vest. I know it sounds crazy, but this one's getting kind of ratty. So, to preserve this one, I need to find something else to wear every day. So, as always, strap on, wear a helmet, and let's go sewing! You know, here at the Godless Sewing Channel, I am all about audience participation. So, if you see something you like, let me know. I'm on the quest for the perfect vest, but really what I'm trying to do is preserve the vest that I wear every day. So really, I'm just looking for something to wear every day. And considering the fact that I'm sitting in a room with like 15 vests and I have a closet with probably another 30 or 40 of them, this one's gonna be fun. I promise I won't tr try on every single vest, but I'm gonna try a few on and see how they look. What could go wrong? <laughs> So I decided to take the machine apart. I know it's not shocking. And in my investigation in the Godless Sewing Forensic Files, as I was taking this apart, I discovered that there's thread stuck underneath the bobbin case because the machine's not completely turning at all. And I'm hoping that that's the problem. So let's futz around with it, see what happens. So, moment of truth. I've been working on this for a couple of days, and when I discovered what the problem was, I was shocked to find a bunch of black goop literally encased around the bobbin case. So I had to take the bobbin case off and completely soak it and re-grease it. <laughs> and it sounds way more exciting than when it actually was. So, this is an actual moment of truth. And the cool thing is I get to do a ninja knee move just to turn this machine on. But it was a lot of hard work. But like I always say, it's worth it if it works. <laughs> it's going to take a second to warm up because it was so caked in gunk. But hey, it works. And like I always say, welcome to the fleet. <laughs> Stay creative. And keep sewing. So I'm continuing to throw patches on my grandma core vest, and it's actually coming out quite well. It usually, at this point, <laughs> I'll fast forward and show how I um, am sewing the patch on, but I figured I'd tell a story about back in the day, about young Mr. Sewing when I was first introduced to the world. 20 years ago, I lived in Hollywood, California. I lived in, in prime real estate in the, now it's called the McDonald Wright Building. It's on Schrader, <clears throat> excuse me, and Hollywood Boulevard. And where I lived, it was on the second floor. So our patio overlooked Hollywood Boulevard. And you could imagine all the crazy things that I saw sitting there smoking cigarettes, minding my own business. When I say I was a kid, I was like 21, 
20, you know, I, I was young. My whole point is, one night I was sitting there minding my own business. It was a Saturday night, you know, so it was busy. The building that I was in was right next to a parking lot. And in this particular parking lot, people would go there and smoke all the time. It was kind of like one of those weird things that wasn't a secret, but kind of was a secret. So it wasn't rare for people to pull up, hang out, and then leave within 20 to 30 minutes. One night, I'm sitting there minding my own business, and this black Jetta pulls up. I will never forget this for as long as I live. So the black Jetta pulls up. These four guys get out. When I say that this one man was the size of a tree trunk, I'm not even being an inexagerado. I'm not exaggerating. I am not overstating. He was a tree trunk of a human being. And the other three guys were average size, you know? I thought it was kind of strange that they got out of the car, but again, like in LA, you learn to mind your own business. So I'm sitting there smoking and I, you know, I'm watching them. And then all of a sudden, I hear this mountain of a human being shouting orders at his friends. And he looks and he says, play my song. When I say that this man was a gangster, think of the toughest person you know. That person, when they saw this man, would either cross the street or not look him in the eyes. That's how tough this guy was. So when they played his song, I was kind of shocked. core at its finest you know as the weeks go on this vest is becoming more and more amazing i'm upcycling this and turning it into something else this was something that i bought at a thrift store that was kind of a novelty item when i first bought it and now it's something i wear in public so like i always say stay creative and keep sewing Do you know, at this point, I really don't know which direction I'm going to go. I don't know if I'm going to make a sweater. I don't know if I'm going to make a sweatshirt. But the first thing I'm going to do is cut out the base of my sweater sweatshirt. So let's cut it out and see what happens. So I've completely lined the sides of what I think is going to be a hoodie. I might be making a hoodie. <laughs> I've completely lined the sides. Now I'm going to sew it, see how it comes out. All right. It's still kind of a mystery coat, but I've completely lined the everything. I have my pins in place, so let's start sewing and see what happens. It's been a long, long day. So when I started off this project, I said, you know, I don't know how this is going to end, but it's going to be perfect. I made a hippie poncho. <laughs> I love the way it came out. I stuck with my signature oversized giant hood. I may or may not add pockets, but it came out perfect. So 
So when I started off this project, I had no idea how it was gonna end up. And I am impressed on how this hippie poncho came out. So I'm at that weird impasse. Should I add pockets? Should I add a zipper? This time I'm definitely sticking with the flared cuffs because during the winter I wear gloves all the time and it looks awesome when you have big cuffs and gloves on. Also, again, I love the way the hood came out and the fabric that I got from the thrift store that was someone's throwaway Thanksgiving pattern came out perfect in my hippie poncho it looks great so let me know in the comments what you think should I add pockets should I put a bell on top let me know <laughs> So if you've made it this far, I thank you. Let me know in the comments what you think before I put this old vest out to pasture. And like I always say, reinforce your seams, be yourself, and I will definitely, definitely see you next time. <laughs>